Okay, let's begin uh, this tutorial on refraction by first of all defining what refraction is. As you can see on the slide that I have here, the refraction is defined as the bending of light when it passes from one medium into another. Now if you look over at the right on this little figure, we have a beam of light which is coming in and this medium on top which we call the medium where the incident ray is. And then on the bottom we have another medium in which the refracted ray is located. So the beam comes in and by its action of actually crossing this interface between the two media, the light changes direction. It actually bends as it indicates in the direction. This action of crossing the medium and the bending of light is what we call refraction. Now that we've gone ahead and looked at this figure and defined it, let's now look at a real world example of what refraction is and let's go to the laboratory to do this. What you see on the screen now is an actual video that we shot in the Optech laboratory. You see a beam of light that's moving from left to right across the screen and then you see an optical grade plastic block that I'm uh, circling with the cursor right now. What we're going to do is we're going to watch a technician actually insert this block into this beam of light and then be able to observe the effects that occur from it. The technician is now taking the block, has now inserted it into the light beam and what you see is that this light beam is striking right along the normal to the surface. Uh, so in terms of what we talk about an angle of incidence right here, uh, there is zero degrees of angle of incidence. The ray then goes through the block and then exits over here going from the plastic into the air and again exits along the normal to the second surface. We don't see any bending taking place whatsoever even though we're moving from one medium into another medium and again from the plastic medium into the air medium here. Now watch what happens. As the technician now takes the block and begins to turn it, you can start to see now that there is really a bend that's taking place in this. You can see that again the beam of light comes in, but now if we draw a normal to the surface, we now have generated an angle of incidence that is greater than zero degrees. The light then enters into the plastic, it moves straight through the plastic uh, on a straight line, and then as it exits the plastic into the air, you can once again see that it is bent. If we put a normal to the second surface, again, there is an angle here of refraction that's taking place. So when we look at this and we talk about the concept of refraction, we're talking about right here on this surface, the actual bending that takes place of light here, and then again as we move from the plastic medium into the air medium, we once again see this bending taking place. This bending is refraction, and this is what we're going to focus on in this mini tutorial. I think that the uh, laboratory was really very good at showing us two conditions that must exist for refraction to occur, and that is number one, we have to have two different media because what really is central to the concept of refraction is the having a different speed of light in the two different media. Uh, we define this and are able to show this by a term called the index of refraction, which you can see is the ratio of the speed of light over the um, speed of the wave in the particular media. So if we see that the index of refraction in the medium where the ray is moving from the incident ray into the medium where it becomes the refracted ray, if those are not equal to each other, then that implies that the speeds are not equal to each other also. This is very important as we're going to see later because it's this concept that makes the difference in terms of the actual bending that takes place. To illustrate this, let me show you an applet, and it's applet number 50 in your Fundamentals of Light and Lasers book. Okay, here we have applet number 50. And what we want to demonstrate here is that the speed of light can be different in going from one medium into another medium. What you have is a wave of light that is moving from left to right across the screen, as you can see here. We have a block that's in here that represents a boundary in which we have 
uh, a different medium than the medium that's to the left and to the right of that particular boundary. We have a slider bar down at the bottom that allows us to change what the medium is. Now, notice here that on the left and on the right of this boundary, this is air. And as we start out with an index of refraction that's equal to 1, we are also putting inside this volume air also. So we don't have two different media. And you'll notice that as the wave goes through, there is no perceptible change in the wave whatsoever. But now watch what happens. If I now change this and go all the way up, say, to an index of refraction of nearly 2, which is some lanthium flint glass, what I have now is I have the speed of light inside that boundary or that glass as being half the speed of what it was in the air. And notice the difference that you see here. You notice that this is moving much more quickly on the outside. As it enters into this lanthium glass, it begins to move slower. And this is very important, again, for us understanding refraction. And also, we see that the wavelength gets shorter, which is another effect that takes place. It now moves through from left to right in this lanthium flint glass, and then it exits over here and, again, goes back to the speed that it originally was when it was in the air. Now we can continue to change this, raise it up more. You can see the effect again that the wavelengths get shorter, the speed gets less, or we can move the slider back towards that of air, and we start seeing a much less discernible effect on this in that now there is still a shrinking of the wavelength and a decrease in the speed, but not as much. Let's go ahead and go back and talk about a second condition that's important relative to having refraction that again we saw in the laboratory. As I mentioned to you, uh, we have two conditions uh, for refraction to occur. And the second condition is, as you can see on the slide here, is that the light must strike the interface between the two media at some angle relative to the normal. I've illustrated this on a figure just off to the right, as you can see. The blue dotted line that you see is the normal to the surface between the two. And what you see in the red line is the actual ray that is moving in uh, on the incident media. If you recall from the laboratory, when we first shot the laser directly onto the uh, acrylic plastic block, we did not see any refraction effect. We actually had it tilted. And what we were doing is building an angle of incidence in there such that I was greater than zero. So this is the second condition, is that the ray that is in the incident medium must come in at some angle to the normal of the interface between the two media that we have. Let me illustrate this again by showing you another applet. And this will be applet number 54 as uh, referenced in your Fundamentals of Light and Lasers course. All right, when you call up the applet number 54, what you see on the screen right now uh, is this particular applet. And, and through this, we're going to be able to see this idea that as a condition, we must come in at some angle relative to the normal to the surface in the incident medium. What I've got on here now, again, you can see a wave that's coming in the incident medium and then moving through the refracted medium. At this point, there is an angle between the normal, which you can see located right here, and the incident ray that's coming in which is showing us the direction, of course, and in which the light is moving. Now, if I go through and I set that ray up to zero degrees, an interesting effect takes place. We see that there is no bending. Let's go back to where we were. We see here that there is an actual bending taking place because we now have an angle that exists between the normal and the incident ray. But as we change this and go up to zero degrees, if there is no angle at all, we end up with the ray coming straight in and no bending at all. So what we have to do is make sure that to have refraction occur, we must have some angle between the normal and between the incident ray that's coming in. Now, we can do other things to make this more dramatic, to emphasize the difference in the speeds of light. Uh, we can go and take a diamond, for instance. And now what you see illustrated here is both condition one and condition two at the same time. We see there certainly is an angle between the normal that's here and the incident ray. 
And then as it bends and enters into the refracted medium, you can also see that we now have the wavelength shortening and the speed getting less. Now what we need to do is we need to talk more about why this speed is so important. And now what we're doing, as you can see, is we're showing waves moving toward two different media, which we know is important in terms of having refraction occur. We now represent the waves by wave fronts. The dotted line that you see, the red dotted line, is the ray that we have been showing in previous slides. And the blue line is the normal that we have indicated before as well. Also, we can indicate here that uh, there is an angle of incidence that we have coming in. And, of course, again, that's off of the ray that is perpendicular to these wave fronts. Now, what we want to do is we want to progress these wave fronts in time. So here is a time, let's say it's time t equal to zero. When I go to this next slide, the wave fronts have now moved, and we're at a later time. But here's the key. If you look down right here, you can see that a part of this wave front has already intersected the interface and has crossed over. And what is happening now is that this part of the wave front is starting to move slower. Why is that? Because the index of refraction in this medium is now greater than the index of refraction in the incident medium. So as a result of this, we will have that wave front beginning to fall behind. And you can see it again in the next wave front. It's even falling farther behind as more of that incident wave front begins to cross over onto the surface. Now, if we progress a little further in time, the effect becomes even more dramatic again. More of the wave fronts are intersecting the interface between the two surfaces. Again, as that wave front enters into the refracted medium, that is that blue shaded medium, it begins to move slower because its index of refraction is greater than that in the incident medium. And again, you start to see these wave fronts start to turn and start to move back down. And then we now can draw and complete the diagram, in effect, of what we are seeing relative to our original diagrams. Here now is the ray that is perpendicular to the wave fronts that are in the refracted medium. And you can clearly see that because of the slowing down in here, that we now have got a bending that takes place, and we can measure that by this angle r, just like up in here we measured the incident angle coming in relative to the normal. So now we have a complete description of what refraction is. The important concept is there are two different speeds and the two different media, which then cause one wave to move faster than the other, and for the bending then to occur. I've shown you now a series of what I call static slides, in which we have wave fronts that are coming towards a surface and then crossing a surface. Let's actually put this into action or into motion. Uh, I have another applet here that I want to show to you. Uh, this applet is one which, again, you can see the wave fronts that are moving towards a surface. And what we've got right now, as you can see from over here, the very top up here is air. And then the medium in which the waves fronts are moving in through, uh, that's water. You can see, just like before, that these wave fronts move forward. As they come down to the surface, you can see right along that surface as the bending starts to take place. And why again? Because the speeds are different. If we go and pick another medium, let's go to diamonds because the speed of light in it is much less and therefore the effect, the bending that is, refraction that's taking place is going to be much more pronounced. So again, we have all of these wave fronts that are incident on the surface. Look at what happens again along the surface as the speed of the wave that's in the refracted medium slows down. It causes the bending effect to take place and you can clearly see that as we come down here, that if we had a normal drawn here, there'd be an angle of incidence. And if we extended the normal down into the diamond medium, we could see the refracted angle as well. And you can see that this bending is taking place.
We've now come to the conclusion of this mini tutorial. Uh, hopefully you now have a better grasp of this concept of refraction and it will help you later in the course as you get into more complex volcanic concepts. I wish you every success in the remainder of the course.